Hi, you're on the Alice Reddit Stories channel. Subscribe to my channel as well as to my Facebook, the link is in the description. Enjoy watching. Background, my parents have been married for 35 plus years, classic young 20s marriage, wanting to live together after dating for a year. My dad came from a poor family, with lots of trauma after his dad passed away while he was young, while my mom had an average middle class upbringing, not perfect, but average. Had two kids, me and my younger brother, while in their early 30s and moved around the country frequently until my brother and I were in late elementary school. Both worked demanding jobs, my dad's less so as he has gotten older and entered the private sector, retired military. I moved out of their house less than a year ago and struggled with my mental health while I was there. I believe it was due to the stress my dad caused when he tried to ask too many personal questions while I was there, like the state of my anxiety slash depression when I wasn't ready to talk about it, my spiritual viewpoints, etc. He also pries into my brother's love life, who has never dated anyone, dad thinks it's not normal. So, he just has this arrogance and entitlement to parts of his family that we are not always ready to share, especially with my brother and I, who are going those journeys at the present and haven't fully realized those answers. I noticed he has had a bit of a problem for the past few months, when he was turned down for a job he was very invested in getting. He seemed to think a new job would solve all of his problems, and when I would come over to visit he would get more drunk than he usually would on casual occasions, so I offhandedly said to my mother recently that he was an alcoholic and she was too eager to agree. So she elaborated more today. On to today, my dad is away picking up my grandmother to come live with my parents for a month or two, which will only exasperate the situation described below, so while he is away my mom is taking a couple days off to rest and do whatever she wants. My dad is a bit uptight, classic retired military man, but I have been noticing that my mom has been enjoying his times away even more in recent weeks slash months. Today, she came over to my workplace and we went out for lunch together and she opened up on how my dad's drinking has been affecting her. Apparently a few months ago when my aunt, my mother's sister, was visiting, he got very drunk and yelled at my mother for two to three hours late at night, saying she was not a good partner and never opens up to him. This behavior is not unusual for him. When he was a kid he would yell at my mom for small mistakes she would make or misunderstandings between each other, but he would not do it drunk, at least that I noticed as a kid. And it has been happening almost every weekend where my dad will get drunk and usually yell or get mad at my mom. At the beginning of the month, my mom said things were getting better. But then they visited my brother for a long weekend. My dad got slash wasted slash and berated my mom further for not being a good partner and not meeting his expectations and saying he thought he could change her, meaning trying to get her to emotionally open up to him. She tried to talk to him, but every time he would walk to the other side of the room and only argue with her when she tried to make a point. During one of his rants, he mentioned getting a divorce, which made my mom cry to talk about. She said this pattern was common but it is also her fault for not communicating enough with him and shutting down. I told her this was patently not her fault. If he is being disrespectful during their conversations, then of course she is not going to want to talk or confide in him. I also remember this as a kid, wondering why my mom wouldn't stand up for herself or talk to my dad when he was yelling. But now I get it. Being at the brunt of his behavior gives her the freeze response out of flight slash fight slash freeze because those are natural reactions to being yelled at and feeling in danger. With me moving out, my brother being away at college, his frustration with his career, those things have removed his coping mechanisms and now he is taking it out on my mom. Luckily she seems to be physically safe, but I'm afraid she's being emotionally abused since she can't get any rest on the weekends after her stressful job. And I feel slash helpless slash and scared for her because if I imagined myself in her shoes, I would not feel safe at home with my dad if he did that to me. I've been in the process of trying to get a therapist for myself for a while, but should I try to help my mom and or dad with it as well, marriage and or individual counseling? My dad would probably be very against a therapist, my mom told me he's afraid of getting one that isn't as smart as him face with rolling eyes, so I'm wondering how futile the effort would be. Should I even get involved at all, other than offer my mom a safe place to be and support her? I am very afraid to confront my dad because we have our own complicated dynamic as father slash daughter and I'm afraid he'll take it out on my mom if I slip any details of what she's told me. Don't forget to support my channel by subscribing. Thank you.
let's begin this story with a disclaimer. I am polyamorous and have been for as long as I can remember, but I didn't always know how to frame it or what to call it. I don't know exactly how I became that way, or if I was born that way, or if it's just the way my brain rationalizes things or what. I'm an INTJ, if that helps, or hurts, so I know that I lean more toward logic than emotion when thinking about things, and I know that polyamory simply makes more sense to me than monogamy does, from a purely logical standpoint. I am not free from feelings of jealousy, but I do my best to look inward and understand what that initial feeling of jealousy really means and where it comes from versus letting it dictate my actions toward misplaced aggression. I can be possessive or territorial at times, but I do my best to acknowledge my feelings and emotions and try to understand where they come from, and to be mindful of how my feelings might be influencing my actions. I bring up the fact that I am polyamorous so that you can understand that this is not simply a straightforward monogamous situation, and it comes into play in many forms throughout this story. Anyway, let's continue. In 2011, I found what I now believe to be my soulmate. I didn't believe in that sort of thing then, and I wouldn't for another six years, but we'll get to that. We'll call her Casey for privacy. Casey, 31F, and I, 37M, were in the same friend group, a community of people that had formed around a local 24-hour coffee shop just outside the main city. The fact that all manner of different groups of people were all able to do something as simple and universal as grab a cup of coffee resulted in it becoming a main gathering spot for people at all hours of the day and night, and eventually a hodgepodge community formed, and in that community, friends became close and unclose, involved and uninvolved, but it always felt like a family of sorts, and it was within this family that Casey and I became close. It was not uncommon for things like polyamory to be accepted in this community, as it was a melting pot of a myriad of different cultural and social backgrounds, with most of us joining the community in our late teens and most of the community consisting of people in their early slash mid slash late twenties, and eventually fading out to live their own lives, but still being welcome in their thirties. I was always honest about my poly nature with Casey, and they understood. We eventually started dating, and because of our mutual friends and how close the community was, there were multiple times where friends we were close with became physically involved with us. We were all close and trusted each other and were attracted to one another, so as long as Casey and I were in agreement and were honest with one another, everything was okay. We were crazy in love, but things were far from perfect. Casey would distance from me on a quasi-regular basis, and I felt alone in the relationship often enough for it to be an issue. I was also cheated on multiple times throughout the relationship, which should be difficult to do, considering how open we were, but somehow Casey still found a way to cross boundaries and lie and hide things when it wasn't necessary to do so. We had a breakup in 2017, which lasted for a little over six months, before we eventually got back together. This is when I determined that Casey was my soulmate, as we seemingly defied all odds to get back together, but I won't get into that, as this story is already going to be far too long as it is. Within a year of being back together, we got engaged, and made an agreement to stop any physical-slash-sexual involvement with others once we were married. I agreed to these terms, despite being poly by nature, because I loved this person with all my heart, and I wasn't currently involved with anyone else, so I didn't have to cut anyone off. All of our friends understood and supported us, and we were married in 2019. However, it wasn't long before Casey began flirting with some of our closer friends again. I wasn't entirely against it, but I was following Casey's lead and respecting Casey's wishes, so I was a bit confused by the mixed signals. We set a new boundary that casual flirting was okay, and sending lewd slash nudes was okay, so long as anything slash everything was shared between us, but things wouldn't progress to physical intimacy. This went on for a few months, until a newer person that joined our community admitted to having a crush on Casey. There's a lot more to the story, and maybe I'll do a part two, but I believe this was the beginning of the end of my marriage. I eventually lost everything because I got involved with this new partner also, then we developed feelings, then I drove a wedge between my wife and I because she wanted me to cut contact, and then I didn't, and then we separated, and eventually got divorced. Now my wife won't speak to me, and I feel like it's all my fault. I want to reconnect with her, but she has vehemently ignored me for over a year now. Don't forget to support my channel by subscribing. Thank you. My boyfriend, 30M, and I, 25F, love each other very much. 
We both see a future together and, for the most part, we have a healthy relationship. Our main source of conflict tends to be our differing ideas of relationship expectations and boundaries. My boyfriend prefers a looser version of monogamy, he wants to flirt with other people, dance with other people at the bars, kiss other people, get their numbers, involve them in our sex lives, etc. He says that even though he is attracted to other people and flirts with them, it does not mean he doesn't love me or want to spend his life with me. He sees it as a reflection of total trust, confidence in each other, and security in our relationship. When we first started dating, he told me about his previous relationship and how it was more of an open relationship, but it eventually ended in disaster. His ex was very open and adventurous in this regard. He told me how he misses that level of excitement and the reason he stayed in that relationship for so long, through loads of abuse, was because finding that kind of sexual connection and energy is a rarity. Now that we are about a year in, we can't seem to move past this. I tend to have a more standard take on monogamy. I have trust issues and I don't feel completely secure in this relationship yet, so the idea of exploring with other people makes me uncomfortable. I would say that I am very sexually open and that there is not much that I would ever say no to. I have not been in any threesomes, group sex, etc., simply because the opportunity has never presented itself. While I am not opposed to potentially involving other people in our sex life further down the line, I do think that it would be important for me to coordinate slash initiate it as opposed to my partner. The thought of watching him engage with other women sends me spiraling right now. A large part of the conflict stems from his eagerness to engage slash compliment other women while he seemingly neglects me. I've asked for him to be better about offering me compliments and making me feel desired slash attractive to help build that confidence and security. He has made a strong effort towards that and has been receptive of that feedback, but it's still hit and miss. One of the things that I really struggle with is being the complete opposite of his normal type. Every girl that he points out as attractive happens to look very similar to his ex, darker hair, tanner skin, dark eyes, short, bigger boobs. I have lighter hair, light eyes, smaller boobs, and I am on the taller side, 5 feet 6 inches. I often find myself comparing the way I look to these other girls and it's not easy. While I know that my partner loves me and finds me attractive and is choosing to be with me every day, I can't seem to overcome those insecurities. I compare myself to this idea of his ex and how sexually adventurous and fulfilling she was all the time. I know it's a very unhealthy thing to do, and I'm in therapy to work on that, among other things. Most recently, he got a girl's number that he had said was attractive, his type to a T, a very similar look to his ex. He did it while I was standing near him, but I did not recognize what he was doing at the time. This girl was a friend of a friend, and later expressed to that friend that she was uncomfortable with his approach when she learned he was in a relationship with me. I brought this to his attention, because it also made me uncomfortable to learn that he had asked for her number, and it's now become a large fight. My partner told me he got her number with no intentions, purely platonic. He says he feels judged and shamed that this is college drama for my immature and toxic friend group. I tried to tell him that I am not accusing him of anything and that I thought I had set a hard boundary around asking for other people's numbers while we were out drinking. Of course, I didn't handle the fight as well as I could have because there is previous trauma from being cheated on slash similar behaviors. In this fight, he also brought up something that happened months ago. We were out drinking with friends when I made out with my female roommate. I felt horrible. I came to him immediately and told him about the situation and apologized a million times. At that point in our relationship, we hadn't really discussed boundaries, but I knew that what I did was sketchy. Once we set boundaries, I've honored them. We've since fantasized about that makeout together while having sex. He used that as an example of him offering me grace and being supportive, and now my reaction to him getting someone else's number as a double standard. He sees me making out with my roommate and fantasizing about other people as an expression of me wanting to have a more open version of monogamy. Ultimately, I do agree that flirting and attraction towards other people is a very normal, natural human experience and that being able to express that side of ourselves in a secure relationship is enjoyable. I would not be opposed to having threesomes or group sex with him, I've expressed that any exploration with other people would have to also be with each other and he has said that's fine.
but at this point in the relationship, I am not fully there yet, and I'm especially not where he is at. Every other aspect of our relationship is wonderful, but this feels very overwhelming and recurrent, I'm not sure what to do. Is this reconcilable? Is there any possibility of compromise? Thank you for watching, subscribe to my channel. There are many interesting articles ahead.